Dwarf Fortress, a staggering complex work brought forth by two brothers over the last 16 years. Dwarf Fortress has been hugely influential. Without it, there would be no RimWorld. Minecraft, if it existed at all, would be markedly different. It's safe to say that it's a work of genius. It's also a game I could never successfully play. In the past, to learn to play Dwarf Fortress is to step into the minds of the Adams Brothers. Despite my best efforts, I have learned multiple times as I watch, lost in a web of arcane menus, my ASCII dwarves die slow, confusing deaths that I cannot think like an Adams Brother. But a new day has dawned. The Steam version of Dwarf Fortress has arrived. It's been slathered with a new graphical coat of paint, and the UI has been overhauled by a neutral third party. Can me and the Adams Brothers reach an understanding and lead the dwarves to greatness? Strike the Earth! So much has changed that the game even contains the unthinkable. A tutorial of sorts. Using the tutorial to start meant that the game chose my starting location for me. Starting me in a flat wooded land, dotted with ponds, and a single small river. The tutorial is fairly bare bones, but it did teach me how to dig, how to make a stockpile, and a carpentry workshop, and even make and place a bed. I guess all the dwarves are going to be sleeping here for now. I hope they don't mind sharing a bed. Once the basics had been covered, the tutorial disappeared, but a robust help menu now exists. Surveying our situation, I discovered the river contained fish, but farming seemed a necessity. Quickly ran into my first problem. Can't farm on stone, no matter how good a dwarf you are. I needed soil or mud to give me a place to start a farm. Luckily, a nearby pond gave me an idea. I got one of our intrepid dwarves to mine their way into the bottom of a pond, thus allowing the water to flood into our farming cave, bringing mud with it. After that, we only had to wait for the water to evaporate before we could get to farming. Now that a food source had been established, it was time to make this hole a home. As much as I'm sure my dwarves were enjoying sharing the same bed. I got to work carving out bedrooms. I also got acquainted with a work orders menu. It's a powerful tool in the game that reduces the micromanaging of what needs to be made in the fort. Luxurious 3x3 bedrooms for all my dwarves were mined out. At the beginning of the first winter, a migrant wave arrived, bringing us a handful of new dwarves put to work. Also a number of useless children. From here, the fort progressed rapidly. I gave the fort a number of administrators, including a manager to keep track of all the work orders that I was making, and a bookkeeper to keep track of the inventory. We also added more workshops, including a crafts dwarf workshop, where we started our first industry. Wooden cups! Look at them all. Cups upon cups upon cups! I did eventually learn about bins, but still, our cup overfloweth with cups! After seeing many of our dwarves with the need to pray, we carved out a temple and included three altars to the three most popular gods in the fort. Eventually the bedrooms were also upgraded with such luxuries as smooth stone walls and a chest for each dwarf to store their um, dwarfy things. The final major construction project was a tavern where I learned a strange fact that dwarves don't like to share tables. So my dreams of a dwarven cafe full of four top Parisian tables was crushed. In consolation, I did include tables in these corners, with a single chair backed up to the wall, so a dwarf could be the cool, mysterious guy in the corner. In an unexpected move, the tavern did attract a visitor, a human thief, who after a solid year hasn't decided to leave yet. Seriously, dude. What's your deal? Go away. Don't steal anything. At almost two solid years in, the game had been kind to us so far. But it seemed there was only a matter of time until goblins, or worse, came knocking. So I embarked on what would be the hardest dive into the madness of the menus, the military screen. Setting a squad and establishing a training regimen for them took the combined efforts of multiple members of my Twitch chat and a fair amount of just staring at the screen. But in the end, our four dwarf military squad works, I think? No, no it works, it works, I think? As the second year of our fort came to a close, I reflected on how pleasant I found this experience compared to my previous attempts with the game. It may have helped that the game itself was kind. We had weathered no goblin attacks, or strange moods, or forgotten beasts, and none of our migrants so far had turned out to be werewolves or vampires, as far as I could tell. Dwarf Fortress, for me at least, has entered a glorious new age, one where many more can experience the depth and breadth of the simulation that the Adams Brothers have created. Strike the earth, my friends! I'll never know what lies buried. And so ends my first foray into Dwarf Fortress Steam Edition. 
I hope you enjoyed this little video. I'm trying something a little different. Uh, I hope it was entertaining. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.